Let me begin with a statement. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, I would not presume that if the security agreement with Iraq goes beyond a uh, status of forces agreement that you need only inform the Congress. You need to do much more than inform the Congress. You need the permission of the Congress if you're going to bind the next President of the United States in anything you agree to. But that'll be something. There will be no response, please, from the audience. Uh, but we have plenty of time to discuss that. Um, let's assume, gentlemen, all the progress you assert has been made, and I don't think anybody denies there's been progress made. And let's assume that you, and I believe you, you mean what you say, that our commitment is not open-ended. Um, uh, how far along this continuum, if, as they say, as uh, average Americans say, on a scale of 1 to 10, how far along are we on this progress scale before we get to the point where we can significantly reduce American forces? Three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. Where are we? Give, well, give us some sense of how much progress has been made relative to how much needs to be made, not in specific kinds of progress, that needs to be made in order for you to recommend to the President of the United States, Mr. President, we can not only draw down totally the surge, but well below, well below what we have committed, uh, haven't, haven't had in place the last three years. Well, again, Senator, you just mentioned the fact that we are, in fact, uh, drawing down the forces that did constitute the surge, and that was part of the recommendation. Uh, it would have been a very, very difficult recommendation to do otherwise, but certainly that it was in the realm of the possible. Uh, and that was made uh, possible by the progress that we have made, particularly uh, against Al You're allowed to Iraq, draw. You, you recommended insurgents. drawing down before a pause to the level that's 10,000 above what it was before the surge. Is that about right? Uh, sir, it's actually less than that. Uh, but again, it's, but it's a, in the ballpark. But it's above it what is it was. It is above uh, because of certain enablers uh, in particular. But in the interest of time, can units. you give me a sense? If you don't want to answer, just tell me you don't want to answer. On this scale of 1 to 10, to get to the point where you turn to the president and say, Mr. President, we can go down well below 130, which is the pre-surge level. How far along are we? Well, I think we're in a six or a seven or somewhere along there, Senator Biden. Thank you and, very much. And what we'll do, again, is assess the conditions. Now, it doesn't mean that we have to wait beyond no, I understand. You know, much I, longer I, I beyond 45 days. I just want to get a sense days. of where we are in this continuum. Okay, sir. Secondly, uh, uh, Mr. Ambassador, is al-Qaeda a greater threat to U.S. interest in Iraq or in the Afghan-Pakistan border region? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, al-Qaeda is a strategic threat to the United States uh, wherever it is, in, in my Where day. is most of it? Uh, if you could take it out, you had a choice. The Lord Almighty came down, sat in the middle of the table there, and said, Mr. Ambassador, you can eliminate every al-Qaeda source in Afghanistan and Pakistan or every al-Qaeda personnel in Iraq. Which would you pick? Well, given the progress that has been made against al-Qaeda in Iraq, uh, the uh, uh, significant decrease in its uh, capabilities, the fact that it is solidly on the defensive and not in a position uh, as far Which as I Which would you pick, Mr. Ambassador? Uh, I would therefore pick uh, al-Qaeda in the Pakistan-Afghanistan border area. That would be a smart choice. Uh, now, assume that all the progress uh, you assert has occurred. Um, what further is required for you to suggest, either of you, that the progress can be sustained at levels under 140,000 troops, $12 billion a month, 30 to 40 deaths a month, and 225 wounded a month, because that's where we are now. Where we are now is to maintain where we are now, you're saying to us, at least for the next 45 days. We have to continue to have 140,000 roughly troops in place. We have to spend $12 billion a month. We're going to probably sustain 30 to 40 deaths a month, and we're going to have somewhere around 225 wounded a month. So what has to happen? What has to happen for us to be able to reduce the cost in life and in dollars and in deployment? 
Uh, there has to be progress in various local areas that we will look at, uh, Senator, because again, what we'll be doing is the an essentially combination of battlefield geometry that looks at the enemy in the friendly situations, it looks at other factors, and there's, there's also what the ambassador has termed the political military calculus, and you take that into account uh, in local areas, most likely province by province, uh, and determine, we already have four or five locations that we are looking at most closely uh, and determining uh, whether to off-ramp those units at an appropriate moment, right. uh, well, assuming me, progress my, can continue. Thank you. My time is running out. You're, uh, tell me, <coughs> tell me whether or not um, there are any conditions under which you would recommend us leaving conditions meaning they got a lot worse. You say to maintain the progress. Is there any conditions in which those charts you showed us, if this time in November or October the American deaths have spiked back up to 2006 levels. If, in fact, the awakening has decided it's awake and it's not going to be integrated and it's better to go to war with the Sunnis, the civil war becomes more a reality. <coughs> if, in fact, the numerous militia that exist among the Shia are in open war, not just in Basra, but for an extended period of time with one another, are any of those conditions such that you would say we're going to have to withdraw and contain? Or would you just automatically say, not automatically, would you say we have to once again infuse more forces back into Iraq to settle it? We talk about this in terms of, you say, to sustain the progress. What happens notwithstanding the pause? if, in fact, the progress is reversed, obviously, significantly, and unalterably. What do you do then? Do you just come back and tell us the same? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, it, it, would be, it would depend on the specifics at the time. Uh, Let me give you the specifics. 90,000 Shia say we're not getting dealt in, and the same kind of exchange and violence between Sunni and Shia is reignited in September, from Ambar province into Basra, I mean, excuse me, Ambar province into Baghdad, and that same level of ethno sectarian violence is once again established. That's a condition. What do you do? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I really don't think you can have a productive conversation that is purely based on those hypotheticals. I mean, how did, it, how did it get that way? Um, uh, how did it get that way? Uh, I don't see that as likely, given what is uh, lying ahead in terms of provincial elections, for example. I think that is where you're going to see both Sunnis and Shia focus to uh, prepare that for those... If, uh, if the elections don't get carried off because of violence. Um, then we'll, we'll look at the circumstances and assess. I can't think of any circumstance where you fellows are likely to recommend, no matter how bad things got, where you would withdraw. But I may be mistaken. Um, that's part of everyone's concern, at least mine. I yield to my colleague, Senator Luger.